Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to create an Office 365 Education tenant. A tenant it's like a console where you will be deploying every Office 365 Education A1 service like Teams, Email, OneDrive, Jammer and the rest of the services. The very first step that you should follow is you need to introduce in a web browser. I recommend to use an in private browser or an incognito session on Google Chrome. Uh, if you are using Microsoft Edge, you can run an in, pri in private browsing to uh, access uh, the next URL. You need to follow aks.ms slash try office 365 edu. In the description of this video, you can find the URL I am using for accessing uh, this uh, page. The next step, you should select the specific country where your school is based. In my case, I am choosing uh, Trinidad and Tobago because uh, that's where we are creating for demo purposes this uh, environment but it is very important for you to select the right country for support and online services support purposes. So let's continue. You need to put your name here. I will put my, my full name, Carlos Daniel Sierra. My school email address, You, uh, if, if your school doesn't have an email address or you, um, don't have a formerly an inst institutional email address, you can put your personal email to create the service. In my case, I will provide uh, a very particular uh, email address where you can put, of course, the uh, information that you can access and th that specific email should uh, be accessible for you. Okay, so my my email for this demo will be this one um, i will put uh, this direction and uh, my school phone number try to use your uh, mobile uh, number your personal mobile number because that's where microsoft sends text messages for uh, administration and uh, global administration purposes the school name so this will be a demo school so this is my demo school of caribbean the school size it is very important for a uh, visibility to microsoft to tell which is the right size of your school in terms of the total students the total uh, faculty and staff members that you uh, have so i will select by in this example um, this option I will choose uh, next, I will hit next. And then this is the most important part where the console or the formerly the tenant uh, would be named. And that's where Microsoft names the tenant. When I say name, uh, I mean that you should think in the internal collection of sites in the SharePoint online services that will be using the on Microsoft com format uh, site. So for example, here we can use uh, admin and I will say uh, my Caribbean school um, dot on Microsoft com. And uh, this is not, this won't be your uh, principal email address. This will be only an address that is required for a uh, identification purposes of your tenant. And uh, there is uh, another step where you can add a vanity domain or a, a custom domain to your uh, institution uh, service where you can deploy the rest of the email services that you will be using as an identity for uh, signing on your teacher scan, the rest of your teachers can sign in with that email address. You can use this address or you can put a custom domain name that is our recommendation 
for uh, identification purposes and for signing to formerly the Office 365 uh, entire service. No? Teams and other invitations also will be using the email format. We are sending email invitations with this uh, address, so that's uh, one of the reasons we recommend that uh, you should use your personal uh, uh, custom domain or vanity domain into the service. Okay, perfect. So next one, you should configure a password. Try to remember the password, write in a paper or something, just to remember. Then the final step is to accept the uh, rest of the uh, services. I will hit only create my account. You should provide a phone number. This phone number should be reachable for you and uh, it's your personal uh, phone number. I, I will text me a phone number uh, to that uh, uh, service just in case that you remember that this number is the personal uh, number that you should um, have in your hands or have reachable to, because we sent a verification code and that verification code it's very important to um, have uh, at least reachable for putting here the verification code that Microsoft has just sent to my uh, uh, demo number. So when you uh, write and put the, uh, the number, you will pass the verification, the verification when, where, where you and Microsoft uh, ensures that you are not a robot or a chatbot or something that is trying to create tenants. This is very important just for security purposes. That's the only reason you need to put the, um, the personal number. So when uh, this step is done, you should go to this uh, section. Here you have the signing page. The signing page is where you, you and the rest of your users will be joining to Office 365 services. And uh, that's your main uh, primary user, the global admin user, because the rest of the, your users are not yet created. You can use, for example, this, uh, you should click this, uh, you are ready to go. And then the rest of the users are not uh, quite created, that they, they are not really created yet to the uh, Office 365 service. So um, that's here is where you uh, need to ensure that a uh, creation of the mailboxes of the rest of the teachers uh, happen to get access to services like Teams, OneDrive, etc. So finally, this is a very uh, specific technical aspect that you should consider. Office 365, every Office 365 console uh, asks for a particular custom domain when it starts the, the uh, beginner configuration. The initial configuration, uh, you will be asking for providing a custom domain. The custom domain is not necessary to provide as of today. For example, you can, if you have access to someone on your school that you can reach for technical purposes like uh, he or she uh, manages their DNS of the school. Uh, she or him is managing, uh, for example, the uh, institutional domain, and uh, you can recommend him or her to join you and configure the institutional domain of your school. It's great. Put in the domain name space here. If you don't have any idea what I am talking about, and you should provide and you are okay working with the on Microsoft domain that you in the previous step created, please uh, don't use the, uh, just hit back and just go to the home section of the tenant. You, of course, you can later add a custom domain, but it is not necessary as of today to provide the technical configuration to add the registers on the, the registries on the, DNS uh, section in your DNS provider. So back to basics again. We just created an Office 365 A5 tenant that it's in mode, in trial mode, 
that's a, something that Microsoft issues to every school that hits the trial a service of the of the Office 365 console, where you can later um, validate and a Microsoft, uh, you can request to Microsoft the academic tag. The academic tag is the uh, specific uh, internal process validation that Microsoft releases the, that it, you can request for your tenant an academic verification to ensure they you qualify as an academic institution because you need to provide documentation, your uh, uh, legal um, documents that um, confirm you are an eligible school. Uh, if you have an EDU domain, uh, of course, it should be passing automatically the, the, the verification. So the purpose of this academic tagging is because when it comes to an end, this Office 365 uh, A5 trial um, that is uh, over there, and those licenses are going to expire on the next 30 days. And you you can say, oh, I am I have only a 24 and 25 a5 for faculty and a5 for students licenses and and you are you are asking where are the rest where are the a1 and uh, for faculty and students licenses so those licenses will be coming to the purchase services section you should follow the steps on where you can uh, reach these uh, particular uh, services but this step is once you verify it as an academic tenant, your institution. If you are not yet qualified as an academic institution, you should not see the final um, end customer version or of where you can uh, purchase A1 licenses for your school. So please ensure to follow uh, properly. How do you request academic uh, qualification it's very simple here in the console you have the support section if you create a new service request asking for a uh, academic verification hi I need academic verification of my school that's a formerly uh, uh, the question that we used to to ask through this because we have a chat of here and you know uh, th this is this is not solving if, if this is not solving you can type your issue here um, I need to verify my institution to academic tagging when you tag this uh, particular request uh, or whatever text you can use or whatever um, example you can use, here is the option. Uh, verify academic eligibility, uh, etc. And uh, you should hit the, 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 the bottom at, the, at the, the, the bottom of the bottom of the page. And then that's where you request formerly the support ticket. So, that's it. When you hit, you will be probably, please use your uh, cell phone, use your uh, email address, your personal email address, whatever information the um, technical support engineer can use to reach you to ensure the academic verification process that it's really, really important to follow up. So, so that's it. That's the configuration of an Office 365 tenant, remember, you will be joining a five trial, then you should be qualified as a, and tagged as an academic to access the A1 services, and that's all. So thank you for watching, and please uh, subscribe. Give me your comments also, so I can reach, reach you out with further questions. Thank you.